This episode has to do with uh, medicines and herbs in the 19th century. Uh, don't take what we talk about here today as medical advice, especially in the 21st century. We're talking about medicines in the 19th century, and it may or may not be well, let's just pretend that it's not proper advice in the modern world. So, there you go. Take everything you have here as a historical knowledge, not medical knowledge. Enjoy this episode. We're here today at Connor Prairie in Fishers, Indiana. It's a wonderful uh, early 19th century historic site, and we're in Prairie Town. Everything that's happening in Prairie Town uh, with the staff members is in first person. That means that they are acting as if they are in the 19th century. So we're gonna have to do this episode a little bit differently than normal. I will actually be taking on that same kind of role. I'll be in the 19th century. So join me today as we experience Connor Prairie. Uh, Mrs. Armstrong? Uh, Mr. Townsend, I presume. Yes. Yes, I heard that you were in town. Yes, I've come to speak to you directly. Mrs. Zimmerman sent me over, and I am headed up north into the wilderness to look at a piece of ground, uh, hopefully to settle up there. But they say there's nothing, no civilization <laughs> there isn't whatsoever. Much at all. And uh, no doctors, no nothing. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to need something medicinal. And they say, you're the person to talk to. Well, I'm glad that you came. What am I going to find? Well, when you're up there and you've moved, if that's what you've chosen to do, of course you're going to be putting a garden in, so you'll have things that you'll be planting. But in the wild, you're going to find things like burdock, the leaf you can use uh, for skin irritation, mm. so as a poultice mm. or a compress. Plantain, uh, if you have been a bit, um, oh, what would I say, a bit stopped up, and perhaps you have developed piles, it is a very good thing to use there. You've got chicory, which of course you're going, not going to have access to coffee beans, so you can use the root there for coffee. Wild cherry bark, which you can use for a bit of pain or coughs and colds. Mm. And of course, the willow bark, which is one of the especially good ones for if you're having any pain in the knees, in the, in the gut, in the head, that makes a very good tea. And then clover, coughs and colds, especially nice for that. And you're going to find that just about everywhere in an open field. And, and how are most of these prepared? Do I need to do something more difficult? Not difficult at all. Actually, most of them are going to be done either as a tea or a decoction. Ah. I don't think I would use any of those as a tincture or an elixir, but they certainly will work very nice. A poultice, a compress, you make a tea and then you soak a cloth and, and wipe over the skin. Mm. Or you do uh, uh, something perhaps as I'm doing for my young grandson, John Marshall. Ah. And these are all just found in the wild? I'll find them just scattered willy-nilly. You will find them scattered willy-nilly, but you want to make certain that you're identifying them correctly. Mm. So once I have a garden, mm -hmm. then what, I, what do I need to take with me? What do I need to plant? Oh, you're going to need to find seeds. And if you take those, Mr. Whitaker carries those down oh. at the store. But I also have some seeds I can share with you. You'll definitely want to take a bit of yarrow. Yarrow is especially good for stopping the flow of blood. And I imagine that yes. it'll be a time that you'll cut yourself. Uh, basil especially nice. It's good to eat, but it's also very good to wipe on your skin yeah. to keep the bugs at bay. Ah. Um, a very nice one, too, is the bee balm or monarda. Just a good general purpose tea for good health. Uh, if you need to uh, perhaps be a little bit invigorated, you want to do costumery. Mm. And uh, I've heard of costumery. Yes, my, my grandmother used to say, put it in your Bible, so when the minister was long-winded, you could chew it. It'll keep you awake. <laughs> Sage is especially nice. It is a good tea for complaints of the throat and of the, the lungs. You've got feverfew, which it sounds odd because you would think it's good for fever, but mm -hmm. it's especially good for headaches. Ah. It is very, very bitter, though. So something such as honey, you're going to mm. want to be able to add to that to sweeten it up quite a bit. All right, so in the wintertime, when you're down in the dumps a bit and forlorn, uh, your lemon balm is especially nice to make a tea. Mm. It helps to uh, brighten your spirits a bit. It's good for anxiety. And uh, I think those are probably the ones that I would re recommend that you begin with. And one last thing that I think will be important to look for is the elderberry bush. Uh -huh. The elderberries are wonderful to use in a tincture. So that's where you will cover them over with a spiritus liquor of uh -huh. some sorts. Yes. And of course it can be awfully strong. I don't know if you have any young'uns. 
So I would put it into a bit of tea and perhaps add a bit of honey to get them to take that. Mm -hmm. And good for? Oh, colds, uh, influenza, uh, um, sinus. Yes, mm, very good mm. for all of those things. So these seem easy enough to procure in that area possibly, I hope so. What about the preparations? Preparation really isn't difficult at all. Things such as jewelweed. I have used to make a tea, and that's a very strong tea, as you can see oh, from the yes. color that's here. Jewelweed I like to use uh, as a tea for rashes, especially mm. poison ivy. And I imagine you'll find to plenty drink? of that. Not to drink. That's a oh. good question. It is more of a compress, so that you're going to soak a cloth oh. in it and wipe it onto the skin, or even mm. wrap it around the skin. It helps to cool and keep the irritation or the itch mm. at bay. Then uh, the one I'm working on here now is actually a poultice. And what I've done is I've put the mullen leaf that uh -huh. you can see here. And feel that. Uh -huh. You will probably find that one. It uh -huh. is also known as a hag's torch or a, um, oh, mullen is just what I've always known it as. I think, um, I've, I think I've seen this uh, referred to as Indian tobacco. Perhaps you have, mm. perhaps you have, because oftentimes it is taken as a smoke for lungs, ah. yes. But I also like to, with the young grandson, the yellow flowers that develop on the stalk, yeah. I put those in oil, yes. I shake that every day for about four weeks, I strain it, and it is good at keeping earaches settled, mm. so they're not so irritating. What I've done though here is I've taken this, I've added a bit of salt to help break it up, and a bit of vinegar. And it is going to be a poultice that I'll put in. He has developed a bit of rash as a result of his uh, his nappy or his uh, napkin and with the heat that we've had. So I will put that against the skin on his uh, hind end and then uh, wrap him up and that shall help to, to take care of the so irritation. Skin. 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 And mm. then if you had a wound or a cut and you're out and since you're going to be where there isn't anything Handy, then you just simply put that over and, and wrap that down with a cloth or something of that sort, and it'll help keep the, the wound much So that seems and simple. To, to heal. So yeah. an easy one to do. And you can even do that by chewing if you so chose to do mm. so. Plantain has so many, many uses. Mm. The leaf is good that if you're out and you have been bitten by a bug or bitten by a mosquito of sorts, you chew that up. Even a bee sting it'll work on. And you take that and put it right directly on that sting or that bug bite, and it'll take that sting and irritation away. But I like to take it and make it into an oil. So I have put that into a, a jar that I covered over with uh, sweet oil. Mm. And then I let that set for about, I would say, it was a good four weeks. And I would shake it every day. And then I've strained it. So by putting this, four parts of the oil, to one part of beeswax, it'll make a very good salve that I'll be able to use any time that I need it for a skin irritation or again for a bite, an insect bite of some sort. Many of the receipt books that we're looking at have medicines that Dr. Campbell would use. Oh. So they're not necessarily ones that you're going to find growing wild, which is what you're looking for. So it's one of those things that you're going to need to look at some books such as mm. the ones that I've listed here. Now, um, this one I, I believe I've seen in the library, Culpepper's. Yes. Uh, herbal. Yes. Um, it is a very, very old book, but it's still being used. Ah. Ladies oftentimes refer back to it, but oftentimes you can't get access to that book, so you'll share what you know yes. Mrs. Zimmerman, perhaps. Mm. Well, Mr. Townsend, I am going to be making a salve here in a little bit, and perhaps you'd like to stay to see, since that's the one that seems most confusing. I would like to experience that. And then, when it is time for you to leave, I'll send you on your way with some seeds for your new garden. That would be so kind. Good. All right, to begin, I'm going to start by putting a little bit of the beeswax into this little pot that's sitting into a, a small little spider where it's been filled with water. That way I'm going to use it uh, to melt the beeswax, but not to burn it. All right, it is ready now. I've got the beeswax melted, so into that I'm going to add the three parts of the plantain oil. Yes because I'm also going to add one part of the lavender oil. Ah. Now that's not one that you're going to find in the wild, but that's one mm. that you'll have in your garden eventually. So you've got the plantain, which is good for the skin, and you've got the lavender, which is good for healing. 
And these oils were just simply prepared by putting those green herbs into the oils and, and letting them sort of percolate for weeks at a time. In the sun. And then strained out in the and sun. And shaking on a daily basis. Okay, so but then you want to make certain that you strain it to keep right. it longer than that. So it's, it's a fairly simple mm -hmm. compound. The final compound is one part of beeswax to four parts of oil. And it can be any combination of oils that you choose based upon what ingredients that you need for what purpose. What you need. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's so simple. It is very simple. So uh, where do you, where do you, uh, do you store this in something? Uh, just a small tin. I'll pour that into there just before it starts to set up. And then it will set up and be just fine to use indefinitely. On anything you need. On any part of the, of the body, skin wise, where you're having an irritation of some sort or a small cut or wound. That's so helpful. Thank you. You're very welcome. Hopefully, I'll be able to find what I need up there. Well, and now that we have it all finished, I did promise you that I would send you on your way with seeds. Ah. So let me get some of those out. And I don't know which way you're heading, but I think if you keep these up tight, they'll last you until you get there. I'll take the thank you so much you're very for welcome. this, and I am headed up north. Thank and you. And keep your eyes open. I will. Thank <laughs> you so much. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, very different and very special episode here at Conner Prairie. It's again, a wonderful site to visit. So if you're ever in this area, this uh, sort of Midwest area and you get a chance to come by, an especially wonderful place to visit. So make sure to come to Conner Prairie. And I wanna thank you for coming along as, as we experiment and try these things out, as we uh, learn new things. Thanks for joining us today.